looking for truth from God's Word that you can understand and apply to your life? You'll find it today on Make It Clear with Dr. Stan Pons. Listen now as Stan makes it clear. An improper word that they shared, they were angry, whatever it might be. That, that's sin. I don't want to put that down. But that's a lot different than for us to continually walk in this particular sinful pattern from our heart to our mind to our work to our lifestyle. And so he says that kind of person who's regarding iniquity, leaves the iniquity, doesn't do business with that iniquity, he says he will not hear us. Don't say he can't hear us. He says he won't hear us. So that means he's choosing all of this. So in our mind, folks, uh, God's promised to hear us, but maybe when we do choose to devote ourselves to prayer, part of the devotion to prayer is to bring about a change of mind and a change of life in you and me so that we have a better relationship with Him. Some of us, it has to stink so bad in our life before we finally want to clean ourselves up. We're so lazy with this stuff or we think it's not so bad until someone says, you stink it. And I hope that's not the case. I'm not trying to spank you all today. I'm not, I'm not angry. I didn't have too much caffeine this morning. At the same time, though, I am, I'm passionate about you and God getting it together. I love Him so much, and I love you so much, and some of you are close, but you could be closer. And that's what I want to do, bring you together. All right, number three, because we need to hear from God. We need to hear from God. The verse says, I wait for you, O Lord. You will answer, O Lord my God. See, um, communication is really a two-way street, and you kind of need both to do this thing and how important it is. And so we need to hear it from God. How many of you have cell phones? Okay, I don't, don't turn them on. Don't you get a cell phone. Okay, we have cell phones too. And we have the plan that I could call Carol because she's on my plan as much as I want, and they don't charge me minutes. How many of you have a plan like that? Don't you love that plan? I really like that plan because I don't chew up my minutes. But I love Carol having, I like Carol having her phone, especially when we go shopping at Costco. How many of you have ever been there? And somehow, whatever it is, Carol has a hard time staying right by me, you know. It's called tongue-in-cheek, okay? It's really me. So somehow we drift. And, you know, and I don't have time to look for her, you know. So I whip out my cell phone and speed dial Carol, and hopefully she has it where she can hear it. And then, Carol, where are you? Now, what really bothers me is when I see Carol in there, I punch the button. Hi, this is Carol. I'm sorry to be able to take your call right now, but if you leave your name, you know, and I'm thinking, oh, where is she? Pick up that phone. Well, we know how frustrating it is in life. Let me just not make too much light of this. It's frustrating that I couldn't get her when I needed her and she back to me, etc. But let me tell you something. We can live through missing each other, contact at the mall or maybe at Costco. But I'm telling you, with the Lord, when we talk to Him, we dial Him up, He's right there, and He's right there to talk back to us and to have a real relationship with us. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Let's go to the next one, number four. Why should we be devoted to prayer? Because we need strength in temptation. It says this, but when you're tempted, and by the way, it doesn't say if you're tempted, it says when you're tempted. That means every one of you will be tempted. And the good news is Jesus was tempted too. And he's our model to show us that when we and get tempted, how to handle it. But here's what the verse says. It says, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it, so that you don't have to crash and burn in the middle of that particular temptation. So all of us are going to be tempted. Now, when we're tempted, some temptations I don't have to pray about. Let's say that I'm tempted with lust, okay? And, and, and I'm in a provocative situation that could destroy my relationship with God, then destroy my relationship with Carol, and the rest of my life is in shambles because I'm tempted in a provocative situation, in a, in a moral, immoral situation. Now, I don't have to say when I'm being tempted, oh, God, what should I do, Carol or this person? Carol, what should I, oh, God, lead me, lead me. What do I do? Mm, help me out on this thing. If this person comes through the door, then that's what I do. I don't play those games because that you don't pray about because God has, here it is, God has clearly revealed what I do in that situation. Would you like to know what it is? It's a very simple four-letter word. F-L-E-E. -E. What's the word, everyone? Flee. So I don't have to pray. Now, I might have to pray, though. How am I going to flee? Where am I going to go? I'm not choosing. Do I flee? It's now, how is this going to happen? And watch, it's not how it's going to happen because if it doesn't really work out, it must mean I should go back. No, it doesn't mean that. I've got to go. Now, which door am I going to leave or dive through the window? All right? 
So that's where my prayer is. Maybe another illustration might help you. Uh, a few years ago, I was on the mainland speaking, and this group put me up in a moderate hotel somewhere in the Midwest. I, I wanted to tell you the city, but I can't remember. All I do remember is after my plane landed, the jet lag, getting all settled in, getting ready for the next day, I, I, I go to bed about 9, 9.30. Sometime around 1 o'clock in the morning, I'm hearing this beating on the door, and I'm waking up, and I'm smelling some acid stuff. Just a, just didn't smell right. Let's put it that way. And they're yelling, get out of the building. It's on fire. Run. It's on fire. And you know, you're waking up and you're, whoa, I gotta, what am I going to do? And it's cold outside and it's fire. And you're trying to put all this together. So I put my clothes on and Carol wasn't with me. So the next most important thing you grab is what, everyone? Your computer. So I grab my laptop. Now, maybe you're not like me, but I grab my laptop. And so I look out into the hallway. And so now I have an opportunity. I already know, get out of the building. I don't have to pray. Get out of the building. But when I get out into the hallway, now I have some options. The fire personnel were there, and they were saying, don't go there, but go here. So I had a choice to make. Now, here's where I'm going with this. When we're tempted, and we go to the Lord, and we have this devotion to God, then we want to please Him. And every decision, including every temptation that He puts before us, not tempting to sin now, just testing us to help us to go to our next level of spiritual growth or a breakthrough in our life. So when that begins to happen, now I go to Him and I already know that I need to, quote, get out of this building. But now, what do I do? What do I do now? And the beauty of the Lord is He says, I promise to always make a way of escape. So you don't ask God, you then say, Lord, guide me through this. And that's the beauty of it. But if you're not really seeking the Lord every day, parading before us are situations that are temptations to succeed, excuse me, temptations to sin or testing to succeed. And that's why our devotion to God is essential. People, people, that's why we have to make prayer the most critical thing for this new year individually, for your sake, for your family's sake, for our health of our church's sake. And how healthy our churches might be how we are on the island. And there's no better, neater people to do this with than one another. How good God is. Let's go to number five, because we need to overcome our own wills. Now we know that the Lord, just before he was put to death, he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. And his prayer was basically, Father, if it's possible that this cup may pass from me. A lot of you know that part. But he goes on to say, and he says, Yet not as I will, but as you will. So what he really wants to do is he wanted to show to us that he was willing to follow his father's will even in the face of the most excruciating situation that was about to confront him ever. Going to a cross, being brutally beaten, mocked, rejected by foes and friends alike and then to die a horrible death that he would then do for those who didn't love him and then to have to go to heaven. So that whole scenario right there, he says, not my will be done, but thy will be done. And then he did what his father wanted him to do. Now, <clears throat> some of you know people that have what is known as a strong will. I'm a little bit that way. Some have a stubborn will. I'm not so much stubborn as I am strong, although they pretty much go together. You know people like that. Now stay with me. Some people, they do have a strong will, and some people have a weak will. The weak will type people are those that they're in a group and a group says, hey, you know what? We got some time. Why don't we go over here? And they're going to go drinking. And so you say to yourself, I'm not going to go drinking, but I'll go with them. And all of a sudden, your testimony is compromised a little bit. You go to the beach. You wear some little more outfits maybe. You, you go out, you're tempted to get so much involved in other things that you forgot to prioritize your life. So you kind of float because you're a weak-willed individual. Then you got the strong-willed and you think, oh, they must be the good ones. They're disciplined. Sometimes they are so disciplined about what they want to do and their agenda and how they want everybody into their agenda. So a strong-willed person is no better than a weak-willed person. What you want to be is a spirit-controlled person. So it's not about a strong will or a weak will. It does matter is, is it a yielded will to God? And once we have that together, then you will be strong. Watch this, when you need to be strong. And some of you need to back off and be a little bit weaker, a little bit more tender, a little bit more, let's go with the flow and not always have to have it your way. But you'll know how to do that appropriately when you've already saturated yourself in an intimacy with God through prayer. So, to overcome our own wills so we can have God's will. Number six, because we need help for what lies ahead. Very similar to the temptation, the testing part, but 
Maybe I could throw this out a little bit differently to you. None of us have a crystal ball. Just recently, what was sent into my email box was a list of the, of the uh, predictions that were made for 2008, such as that the stock market was going to go great and, and people were going to go super rich and all this problem. Now we see all that's happening in America, etc. So nobody has a crystal ball. But even though we don't know what the whole future holds, all of us do know that there are certain things in our calendar that are more likely to happen. For example, some of you kind of know what your day will look a little bit like tomorrow. Some of you know that you have a doctor's appointment and you have to hear the report once it comes back. Some of you are facing a job change. Some of you are a little bit worried because you've got to confront someone in your family or maybe on the job about something and you know you've got to talk to them about it and you want to avoid that. So you know a little bit about the future that you've got to do stuff. You just can't sit soak and sour. It's not just let go, let God stuff. Some of it is you've got to take responsibility and do. And so what do you do in that situation? That's why you have to be devoted to the Lord. Look at the one verse. Many verses, the concept is there. Look at verse 25, or, or Psalm 25, verse 4 and 5. It says, show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth. Now so let's circle three phrases together. Show me teach me, guide me. Now all of those are like a prayer. So he's praying, show me Lord, guide me Lord, teach me Lord. Now if you want to know what do I talk to the Lord about, use those words. Show me Lord, guide me Lord, teach me Lord. Choose any one or all three. Then it says, your ways, your paths, your truth. So all of you, if you want to look at ways, I don't want to make this a hard and fast explanation of ways, but ways might be the things that you need to do in the future. Your path is how you're going to get there. The truth is, what is the way God wants me to go in the paths for the way that he has? So, Lord, I want you to show me. I want you to guide me. I want you to teach me. So if someone's going to speak to me about what I should do, because I'm asking God to help me, let them teach me through your word. So help them to be a word-based person, Bible-based person. Then I want them to show me. Who do I have as a model that I already know that is a person who is devoted to prayer? Stay with me. Who's devoted with prayer. So now when I have a need, I'm going to prayer partner up with them and have them pray for me. Now, parentheses. All of us are going to be given times that we need to be shown, guided, and taught. All of us. That's why this church desperately needs us to change this year. Why? We need to be the kind of person who can model the way, explain the way, and teach the way from a biblical basis. And for us to do that, we have to be already devoted to prayer. Your pastoral team, who has a responsibility to give an account of you to the Lord, and we want to do it with joy and not with grief, we're lovingly, we're calling you out, sheep. We're calling you out to come together for prayer. So what lies ahead? And we always have that curveball that comes in, that person who didn't stop at the stoplight and smacks us from the back. We have time to prepare for that. So we have to be devoted to prayer. Number seven, because unbroken communion with God is possible. Because unbroken communion with God is possible. Let me talk about that for just a brief moment here. Remember in the, the beginning of the message, I was talking a lot about prayer, and I said at the end I want to say something special here. And Here's what I want you to know. <clears throat> It is important for us to be devoted to prayer. Prayer is talking to God. It's communicating to God. I know all of that. But I want to change that just a little bit because we can give you prayer books. We can give you prayer lists. We can put together prayer meetings. We can get you all to do all the external prayer stuff, all the stuff to kind of, you know, make your prayer life look like it's spiritual. And by the way, none of that's wrong. All that's good. What makes it wrong is when you get so hung up on the external stuff and we miss that prayer is building a relationship with Him. Developing an intimacy with Him. And we cannot do it apart from communicating with Him. So these things help us to get to a better goal. But it's not these things. I'm not committed to a prayer list. I'm not committed to... I am committed to Him. Now, watch. I find very few people who are devoted to Him who do not have some kind of structure to keep them together. In a book written by Max Licato, and I don't read all of his stuff, very little of it actually. It, it doesn't feed me intellectually as much as maybe more devotionally. But in his book called Just Like Jesus, 
He writes about a man named Laubach, Frank Laubach. And Laubach wondered this, and I'm quoting, Can we have that contact with God all the time? All the time awake? Fall asleep in his arms and awake in his presence? Can we attain that? Can we do his will all the time? Can we think his thoughts all the time? Can I bring the Lord back to my mind flow every few seconds so that God shall always be in my mind? I choose to make the rest of my life now an experiment in answering this question. At the age of 45, which I thought was interesting because usually by 45, your life is really rocking. Some of you that are younger, you're getting into that mode because you're trying to find everything and put it all together. By the time we're here, we've got the plates in the air now. And they're spinning like crazy. But at 45, he resolved to live a life in what he called, and I'm quoting him now, continuous inner conversation with God in a perfect response to his will. Now what is interesting is that he claims that in his journal, you will begin to see a dramatic change in his life because he chose, whatever called him out, to have this intimacy with God, being devoted with him in prayer, every few moments reflecting back to the Lord, making sure that God's will is his will and his will is God's will, no matter the cost. He said in his journal, his life changed. I would love to get that guy's journal. Not to challenge him, not to question him, but boy, would it be a rebuke to me about what I could have had that I didn't have because I wasn't willing to pay the same price that he paid. And I'd like for us to think about that. The message says this in Psalm 139. The psalmist writes, I'm an open book before you. Even from a distance you know what I'm thinking, talking to the Lord. You, Lord, know when I leave and when I get back. I'm never out of your sight. You know everything I'm going to say before I start my first sentence. I look behind me, you're there. Then up ahead, you're there too. Your reassuring presence, I love that phrase, coming and going. This is too much, too wonderful. I can't take it all in. I'm telling you, we all need that. And so I submit to you, do you want to have the peace of God that passes all understanding? It comes when you are ready to say, I am willing to pay the price to be devoted to prayer, devoted to communicating with God, devoted to building an intimacy with him by communicating with him folks our church is such a good church you guests that are here you think i'm mad and i'm not and they, they know that i'm not i'm not angry with them I, i'm just trying to share with you all that we could go from good to better and some of you can go from better to best right now if we get devoted to prayer together as a family i pray that we will for some of you that are saying oh man I want to begin. Where do I begin with this? If I could offer you one, and I don't even like the term prayer. It is, but it isn't. It's the phrase, call upon the Lord. Hear that? Call upon the Lord. Now, is that a prayer? Is that an acknowledgement? How much do we want to split that theological hair? What we do know is that you're ceasing to think about what's all around you, and you are engaging in God. So call upon Him. And which is the first prayer or engagement in God do we want to have? Paul says what it is. Call upon the name of the Lord and you'll be saved. So if you want a first engagement with God is to say, Lord, I believe that you are Jehovah Yahshua, God who saves. You are the promised Messiah. I believe that you are King of kings and Lord of lords and you died on the cross and you are my Savior now. You've forgiven me of all sin. I don't come to you with a clean life. I don't promise you that I'm going to believe in you and clean up my life to get into heaven. I'm coming to you just as I am and I'm looking to you. I'm calling on you, Lord to be my Savior, not myself, not my belief system, not you and the rest of the stuff. I'm calling on you, Lord, you. I'm acknowledging you. I'm engaging in you, and you alone is the one who died and rose again. I'm telling you, my friend, that's the beginning of the most wonderful rest of your life. We're actually in the land of the dying going to the land of the living. And to go to that land of the living, we call upon the name of the Lord. I'd like us to pray with every head bowed and every eye closed. Folks, if you recall at the very beginning, I'm climbing into the same boat. I'm sitting right next to you hearing myself speak to me. So we're in this together to be devoted to prayer. Obviously, because God laid this on my heart and obviously this is a, you can tell I'm passionate about it. I've walked a little bit further in this than most of you. Not all of you. Some of you have already been there and I'm catching up to you. But I'm a little bit ahead of you, and it's not because I'm better. 
I'm just telling you that I found the sweetness of Jesus. I have sw- I've found the results, the benefits of being devoted to the Lord. And it's so good. And I've just taken my first few bites. And I've got to turn back to the people I love and say, come, come, come. But you've got to let go, let go, let go. Change your schedule. Don't get so involved in all the sports and the activities. Don't get so involved in the work stuff. Be careful. Your family that means so much to you can actually smother your relationship with God. Be careful of that. It doesn't mean abandon sports, abandon your family, abandon clubs. But it does mean change this year. If you want to keep getting the same old, same old out of your life, then I have the answer for you. Keep doing the same old, same old. But you will look back over your life and you'll say, I'm not living with the sin of things that I I did wrong. I'm living with the sin of the things that I could have done that I didn't do right. And I love you too much for that. Every one of you. Those who listen on the radio, I don't even know who you are. Those of you that are listening on our podcast, I don't know who you are. But I'm a traveler in this world with you. So in a certain way, I, I, I know what you're going through in some measure. And I'm trying to point you to Christ. And it's through the door of devotion to prayer to Him. First prayer. Call upon the name of the Lord. The name that says that He is Savior. Would you right now simply say, Lord, I am a sinner. I know I cannot get to heaven by my good deeds. I know I have failed. And Lord, I know that you are Lord of lords and King of kings. But I know that you are my Savior because you have forgiven me. You've saved me from my sin. And I want to thank you for that. Is there anyone in here by an uplifted hand that would silently raise your hand without saying a word, indicate to me that you right now are calling upon the Lord, engaging in the Lord for prayer? Is there anyone? Put your hand up, put it down. Won't have you come forward. Won't have you stand up, say anything. Is there anyone at all? Thank you. All right, now, for the rest of us, this is time for you to take a step forward in being devoted to prayer. Maybe all the things that I said did not ignite you to this, but while I was speaking, the Spirit of God spoke to you about something else regarding prayer that's going to help you get to your next level of devotion to prayer. Whatever it is, respond to the prompting of the Holy Spirit as He uses the Word of God. But folks, do not stay the way you've been going. All of us can go further. And I I don't know all of you, but I can assume all of you could go further than you are. Please stretch. Please make some changes. How many of you would like to have prayer that together we're going to pray that we would be devoted to prayer? And you'd like to have prayer for that. Would you slip up your hand? Is there anyone at all? God bless you. Many hands. Now, I want to tell you that don't be afraid to make that commitment. Some of you, our daughter called and said, Oh, Dad, uh, I, um, I, uh, I don't want to make any commitments this year because I don't want to feel badly if I don't commit it. And I said, Sweetheart, think about that logic. Do you drive a car? Oh, yes. What about the time that you face a stop sign? What about the time you fail to do that? If you've... If you're worried about failing to stop at a stop sign, then you would never drive again, would you? Oh, no, I wouldn't. She said, oh, I never thought of it that way. And I said, so make your commitment to the Lord and then lean on Him to help you to fulfill it. Enjoy the fruit of that, which will continue to motivate you to the glory of God. So stay focused on Him. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come sitting and me standing, but in our hearts we are kneeling prostrate before You. You are the Lord. You are the King. And we love you. And we first confess as believers in Christ that we have prayed. And some of us have been faithful and going a little bit further in prayer. But Lord, we know that we are anemic in what we could be doing in prayer. We know that prayer isn't the only part of our Christian walk. But as Scripture says, that we would continue and be devoted to prayer. And so Lord, we thank you that you'll forgive us of the times we could have and should have and didn't. And we want to thank you now for the grace and the power as we move forward. But now, Lord, we need you. We're praying right now. We need you to help us to have the strength to say no to some of the good things so we now can do the great things for you. Help these dear people that are so caught up with a calendar, so filled with family, so filled with work stuff, so filled with extracurricular activity, so filled with other things that are important, that are not sinful, but can be as a weight if it causes our busyness to be about other things rather than our Father's business. And so, Father, together we do this. And whether or not you choose to grow us as a church because of that, that's up to you. But we do know you'll grow us as a person. 
And we celebrate that. In Jesus' name, amen. You're listening to Make It Clear with the teaching of Dr. Stan Pons, founder of Make It Clear Ministries. Make It Clear is dedicated to taking the Word of God with clarity into every person's world. It is the support of listeners like you who make the ministry of Make It Clear possible. You can provide your tax-deductible gift to Make It Clear online by going to makeitclear.org. Or you can mail your gift to Make It Clear, P.O. Box 607-901, Orlando, Florida, 32860. Thank you for helping us make it clear. If you would like to have Dr. Pond speak at your church or event, please send us an email at tellmemore at makeitclear.org. Thank you, and remember to make it clear. Oh, 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 oh,